Hey everyone and welcome to Already Cancelled. I am Peter, that is Tara, and we are going to talk about the Twilight Zone Season 1, Episode 33. And this is called Mr. Beavis. So full spoilers for the episode, as always. And as we previewed last week, because obviously at the end of every episode, Rod Selling comes on and I'd forget I always forget what what it was, you know, during the week. I, it's not until I start the episode where it all kind of comes flooding back within the first the first couple of seconds mm-hmm. is where I get introduced to the character. I went, oh, that's right. It was the, it was the creepy guy who liked stuffed animals and kids. It was like children. <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah. I remember thinking this would be weird and creepy. And Joe, what's funny about this is that obviously we, we we said again, which was said a few times this season, that there was a lot of thematic similarities just based on Rod Selling's description to not only the previous episode but a few of the previous episodes throughout the season but i want to give this episode some credit for one thing is that while there are some similarities in some ways to some previous episodes mainly the idea of having a guardian angel and a few other things this was like after a few of the more suicidal episodes this was actually a very cheery episode with a very upbeat message that had no dark twist to it it was just no here's a good message good nice little lesson for life and that's that's your that's your story yeah because grow I, up kids I, do you think that was the message i don't know if, i don't think that was the message yeah, a little bit no it was the opposite it was don't don't be be yourself and be happy rather than everything else yeah i yeah i guess they both work <laughs> <laughs> no for me this was definitely like you can yeah, but you could also say that nobody's going to take you seriously if you don't grow up a little bit. Sure, but I think the message of the episode was definitely the idea that him being taken seriously was... like It, it meant giving up who he was, and giving up who he was meant his life wasn't worth living. He didn't care about getting the, the, the raise or the, the nice car or, or everything. I've not, not even told you about the plot of the episode yet. We're already debating the meaning yeah. of it. So, uh, so Mr. Beavis is this goofy character. He's very slapstick. You know, he, he's fallen down. He slides down the banister to impress the kids. He's playing around outside with the kids with the, 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 the football or whatever it is. And, you know, his car's this, you know, old like 1930s racket rackety mm. thing that's barely running 1920s something 1924 i think yeah that's this old ancient looking thing um you know e- you know even ancient in this time period it's not just ancient to us it's ancient in the context of 1960 and yeah cars weren't really meant to last very long <laughs> yeah in the 20s <laughs> so you know, he goes to work, he gets fired for being late and because his desk is cluttered with like knickknacks and little things, including that sort of like doll clock thing that has these really creepy eyes that are like going up and down and are looking left and right as it clicks. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, he's a bit of a hoarder. Yeah. Uh, apparently the, he's, the boss is also, Mr. Peckinpah is also mad at him because he had Christmas carols, carols come in during the working day to you know try and lift the spirits of the staff, but all it really did was disrupt the work. Um, so he's, he, I mean, after he gets fired and he's packing his stuff up, he goes home and finds out he's been evicted. He's having the worst day of his life. Also, his car got flipped over because another car, like, locked uh, its, uh, its tail with it and flipped it. <laughs> so, uh, obviously, being the Twilight Zone, we don't get to see the actual flip. We just, we see the reaction to it and then the car's already flipped because, mm-hmm. and I'm not blaming them for that, but just, you know, I'm, I'm pointing that out. There's not some ridiculous Fast and the Furious stunt in the middle of the episode no it's more like a mr bean stunt yes i mean the character is very mr bean in a lot of ways actually obviously he talks a lot more but there's a lot of <laughs> a lot of bean in there um it was a bow tie you know he's this but so this is the thing the guardian angel shows up and he's like hey i can make your life better we're going to relive that day we're going to go through that day but we're going to fix everything to make sure it doesn't go the way it did and he puts him in a, a normal suit not the sort of tweed thing that he was wearing with the bow ties and no, it's a normal suit and he takes him down, he's got a new fancy sports car, and the kids don't want to look at him. The, the, the vendor who always gives him a free apple is like, no, I don't get, I don't get free stuff to people. Um, and no one's nice to him, no one no one likes him like this. You know, everything he liked doing about his day, the, the friendly atmosphere that he created around him is just completely gone. Um, you know, his desk is just clean and like uniform like everyone else's, there's no personality. Uh, so he gets this ten dollar a week raise, which I'm sure in 1960 was a notable amount for a week raise. These days, not uh, so much. Ten dollars a week? Yes. Yeah, not so much. Yeah, no, 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 no. Um, 
Although notably, he still spent five dollars at the bar later because uh, because he, when he gets charged for all of his shots, he, I noted that that was half of his his pr- proposed raise that he spent in the bar. Um, and but then the guardian angel makes him go to work, and it's like, hey, so you've got all these things you have to do work. You can't do this. You can't be silly. You can't go in there and slack off. You have to just be this. And he's like, you know what? I don't care if my life isn't like perfect. Like I like being me, and being someone else just isn't worth it. I'd rather be me and be poor mm. than pretend to be someone else and be unhappy. Um, and for me, this was just a really positive, uplifting message of like, yeah, because this is the thing, after he becomes himself again and he's, he still gets fired and he goes through the meeting where he gets fired again and he goes outside, the guardian angel does help him out a little bit. He moves the fire hydrant so he doesn't get the parking ticket again. Um, and, you know, he drives off and he's in a good mood. Like, he's unfazed. Is it, do you know what it almost made me think of? It's like, kind of like, it's a wonderful life. But instead of realizing, like, like all the people who will care when you're gone, it was more just about look at how miserable you'd be if you were actually successful. <laughs> like, you, look, look at yeah. how how much you actually like who you are. So just be happy, even though you're having a rough day. Uh, and he rides off all happy. I thought this was a very positive episode. I was in a good mood sure. at the end of this. So you like the episode? I thought it was, I mean, it wasn't one of the best. I was, I mean, it wasn't as intriguing as some of the other ones. It was pretty clear what it was doing really early on, but it was delightful enough. I thought it made its point. And uh, why did you like the episode? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Cynical Tower is about to about to tear this to shreds. This is interesting though because the only time this has happened flipped was the uh, Nightmare on Elm Street esque one, which I was not into yeah. at all, and you were a bit more positive on. So. Take it away. What what, 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 describe your feelings. Okay. Well, first of all, it wasn't a, just a bad day. He got evicted because of his <laughs> lifestyle, because he doesn't make any money, and he lost his job, and he lost his car. Are you taking this too literally? It's it's all it's all. This is not a bad day. This is a guy who makes a lot of poor decisions, and he needs to grow up a little bit. Like there should be some kind of compromise between the lifestyle that he lives and the lifestyle he should be living. Look, <laughs> I get what you're saying, right? In a pure, cold, hard, logical way, you're right. You're right it's that- It's gross to have taxidermy in your home. <laughs> I concur, right? And at, and at work. If your work is too cluttered and you show up late, yeah, you don't <laughs> deserve to work there. <laughs> Man. Like, I agree, like, it'd be nice to have, like, something of your personality on your desk i do that with my job so if anything i have something that's a conversation starter to make friends with my coworkers. but um like if it's if your desk is just a display of taxidermy and weird items that don't make any sense or match your personality at all it's just it's it's just a hoarder that brought their shit so, uh, to work with them okay. <laughs> i would hate this guy if i had to work with him yes if you if you take everything like you know completely literally sure right but i think the the message of the episode is very clearly like don't don't lose yourself right still be sure. yourself if that's what makes I think you happy this was done a lot better with the with the actor who wanted to live his character's life and sure his own sure oh no i life. that was a that was a better episode I, I i will agree what you're essentially saying here is that you're annoyed that he didn't also learn a bit of a lesson by the end where he still had to take things a little bit more seriously. That's essentially think, what you're saying. I think learning to grow up and leave some of the childish stuff from your childhood back in your childhood and grow, you know, become an adult is also a good lesson. <laughs> That's true. That's true. I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I, I get I don't think that, do you, I mean, do you honestly think the end of the episode though is supposed to feel like he didn't like, I got the feeling it was supposed to feel uplifting. Like he'd made the right choice. Yes. Yeah. Right, you I agree think with so that? Too. Yeah, okay. I just don't I just don't agree with it. Like That's that's fair, that's fair. But you agree that was the intent. <laughs> I think it's I I think he should have learned a little bit of a lesson about, okay, maybe maybe I can clean up a bit. <laughs> maybe I can pay my rent on time. I said as as opposed toys. <laughs> but I suppose you could also critique not not him as a character, but more the way the episode like this idea that if, if he does pretend if he, or not pretend but if he does grow up a little bit and is a bit more serious about what he's doing the idea that no one will be nice to him or the kids won't even pay attention to him like you could argue that that's actually so much of an extreme that's just unrealistic like no like kids will talk to just about anyone <laughs> like they don't have to be goofy uh for a kid to 
be friendly with you. Yeah, I I guess. Uh, I think that's not really what the show's been doing throughout. Like every kid who's talks to an adult in the show has either been a teacher or like a clown that lives in their building. Sure. Like the guy who sells knickknacks and ties. <laughs> Do you know what I think is so funny about this? Is that I think I don't disagree with anything you're saying in a real world sense. I just don't think the episode's <laughs> supposed to be taken as cold hard and literal as you're kind of taking his behavior, if that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I just don't buy the premise. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, there are other episodes that do this theme a bit better and that's, i think that's i think it's i think it's an okay message to say that success isn't everything you know and but i think it's okay to and, and obviously i think it's okay to hold on to the things that create your personality obviously i do like i love science fiction movies and i watch twilight zone even though there are other new shows I could watch or abandon TV altogether. I'm like, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> it's part of my who I am. But like, I don't, I don't have like a wall full of pop figures or <laughs> like other stuff. Like it's okay to leave some things to grow up a little bit. I feel like you just insulted half of our audience who are sitting there listening to this or watching this. <laughs> Looking with at their wall of pop, pop figures. figures like, yes. But they're going to be worth money one day. Because <laughs> to be fair, there's a lot of people who collect pop figures. That may have been a rough example. <laughs> okay. Not that I'm I, just I mean, saying I know them. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I, I don't. I use that example because I know these people. And, oh, sure. you know, I think it's okay to like, to just really look at yourself and say, God, I spent a lot of money on these. Hey, <laughs> look, I hate pop figures. I'm just trying to stick up for people who care about them. I think they look stupid. I don't like. I don't get them. But I'm not judging anyone. Sure, I use pop figures as an example, but like there are plenty of things that we could swap with pop figures. <laughs> I just I think it's okay to appreciate art and to love what you love, and but I think it's okay also to leave some things in from your childhood there and move on i get become the, an adult and a regular person in society i get the uh distinct feeling here that there's some uh, personal baggage being brought into this this review <laughs> just just a touch just a little bit maybe <laughs> <laughs> it seems to have really struck well, a chord Davis, i would hate working with this guy <laughs> I don't think that I don't, no, he, too. he's too jolly he for me. He he's far too jolly for me. Like you, you think if I'm up in the morning and coming out of the office, I want to hear like this this jolly fellow who's just like happy to be alive. <laughs> like piss off, let me be miserable. It's the morning, <laughs> right? That's <laughs> like I'm not saying I would like him either. I just I think the episode is a parable. It's a parable about uh, not making yourself unhappy by conforming to who everyone else expects you to be. And on that level, I think it works. I think there should be a little bit of middle ground here. <laughs> In real life, sure. I'm not saying. <laughs> I take things I do very seriously. I'm not. I'm not like. I'm not disagreeing with you here. I'm. I'm just. The context of what the episode's doing. Now, if you think it's a little too sort of one sided and maybe not exploring the idea as well as it should, I think that's fair. Look, I mean, the guy, Mr. Beavis, obviously wants to live in Neverland, and he lives on Earth, and I think that's a good lesson also. <laughs> I don't even... Okay, actually, I have a weird, weird critique here. And this is the weirdest critique okay. I might have had about any episode yet. Is that when he gets fired, and like the other like woman who works there brings, a, brings him a box to like help him pack up his stuff... She brings the tallest, most awkward box. I know. I thought it was a trash can. Possible, but like, then, but then later on, he when he's getting evicted, his landlord has the same type of box. I'm like, for boxes, just different back then. Do you, do you know what I think it is? I think this is the boxes that the the, the, the lighting stands came in or something because that's really specific, long shape, and that's why <laughs> and that's what they had lying around. So they just used those because and the reason why I, it really stuck out to me is not only was the, just how tall it was it's that when the, the woman like starts helping him pack and she like picks up his clock or whatever it is and puts it in she has to like sort of lean all because it's the first thing she puts in so she has to kind of lean all the way over and it's like right up to her armpit and it's she's so yeah impractical reach, 
reaching at the bottom <laughs> of the box. I'm like, he doesn't need this big a box. I mean, I know he's got a lot of stuff, but it's still not. <laughs> I think it's something like more cubical shaped, <laughs> cubic shape. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. I noticed uh, that too. Yeah. Especially because it comes up a second time. It does. Yes. Yes, because he repeats that moment. Uh. But yeah, he's you know he's 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 a happy guy and he's just he's happy to be be himself. No, don't get me wrong. I know this is a great episode. I think I think it's fine. I, I think I like that it was a bit more of an upbeat message after the like the previous few that have been really depressing. <laughs> um, I like my depressing Twilight Zone. <laughs> so do I. I. I I typically prefer them, but um, I, I think it's okay to have a, a nice lighter one once in a while. Um, sure. Yeah. I, mean, I have what... enjoyed them in the past. I just don't think this one's very good. It is worth mentioning if we're compared to another anthology show. My favorite episode of Black Mirror is maybe one of the most positive ones. Mine is the most negative. Mine is definitely Shut Up and Dance. <laughs> That's my second favorite. That, Joe, 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 it's funny you say that. Is that when I was watching season three, and you you, you probably saw the reviews for these actually uh, back when we did mm-hmm. them, is that we got to Shut Up and Dance, and I said it was the best episode of the show. And then the very next episode was Sanjay and Perrin. I went, you know what? I actually think this is the best one of the show so far. <laughs> Season three of Black Mirror is freaking great, all right? Yeah, and it it's a shame that it's not quite lived up to, like, that peak. So I mean, don't get me wrong. USS Callister was great. I quite like Striking Vipers. Not everyone did. Me too. I love that one. But it, it definitely hasn't been the same, right? You know, there's definitely been some recycled ideas for a lot of the episodes. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yes. Anyway, that's, that's a whole other thing um th- th- this is no san junipero i guess is what i'm trying to say <laughs> it's not, right it's not even in the it's definitely in, not shut up and dance and it's not shut up and dance <laughs> <laughs> uh shut up and dance so that is a really good episode i you know some people don't like that episode that, that's actually kind of a divisive one i mean i could see why it's it's hard to like <laughs> ah, but you ah, have to admit it's pretty brilliant I don't think I have felt a knife twist in my stomach know, the, the right? way that something was revealed in that. The end just changes the whole thing. Like from the opening shot, you're like, oh, I have to see this. All of a sudden, I hate everything about this. And yes. it makes me love it. Yeah. <laughs> it's so well done. But the good, the good thing about it is even everything before that is such a good tense thriller before that. Like mm-hmm. it's, it's really engrossing up until that point. And then it's like, holy shit, my complete. You know, it just, it's great. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yes. So I mentally maybe bug out from under you, um, for sure. Maybe this episode isn't the most interesting to talk about since we're now talking about Shut Up and Dance and San Junior Peril. <laughs> uh and San Junior Peril is relevant of course because I mean by the time this goes up it'll already be be out probably, but Terminator Dark Fates like about to hit and McKenzie you know what's her name? Sure. Mackenzie Some- Davis. Mackenzie Davis, thank you. <laughs> Mackenzie Davis is in that she's like a Terminator now. Um yeah, it's always so funny. check out our review. <laughs> yeah, see when you watch on Sandra Pearl, she looks like such this sort of like typical skinny young woman. And then you, you look at you look at the trailers for Dark Fate and she looks like she's a tank and she could she's rip my monster. head off. Yeah. She looks awesome. Oh, jeez. Um I'm a little scared of her, I'm not gonna lie. Uh okay, Mr. Beavis, look, I thought it was fine. I thought it was fine. <laughs> I liked that it was kinda positive and upbeat. It was an easy enough watch. Um, I mean, obviously, we're going to do our, our best and worst episodes at the end of the season. We're getting very close now. We'll get three left. Um, I hope we can remember them all. <laughs> but I don't think this is like at the bottom of the pile. I think there's mm-hmm. a, a few ones. I mean, that it's are no worse. like fever, but like I don't know. I just didn't really like this one. Okay, does that mean we were picking what our bottom three or five or whatever we're doing? You're going to be fighting for this one on there. <laughs> I mean, it'll probably be on mine, but whatever <laughs> yeah we, no, we make a combined list there have been some stinkers like because me and connor have to like agree on a list for star trek so we're going to have to agree on a list for twilight so we're not having maybe our own we list. have some honorable mentions <laughs> i don't know maybe okay me. mentions hey look, i'll put it this way if i end up agreeing this is on the worst five of the season then we've had a pretty good season because i don't think this is that bad i hope i can remember them all i mean 33 episodes so far <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot it's a lot but i mean yeah, i think they're all memorable enough that as soon as you look at the titles or at least an image of each episode you'll just immediately go yep that's that one it'll click okay it'll be fine trust me it'll be fine all right uh but uh yeah so obviously at the end uh mr selling oh actually before we move on to the ending can we talk about the opening because the opening titles were different yeah we had an eyeball yeah it was it was an actual like a close-up it's of an eyeball 
really swirly thing. And then the, the, the like a line came in, and then Twilight Zone kind of came up, up from the line. It was it was different. And what's weird about it is that I know season two because the the famous intro music isn't there yet because it's, it's still the same audio for mm-hmm. this opening as the rest of the season. Season two adds in the doing 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 you know the, the the classic Twilight. Everyone thinks of mm-hmm. the Twilight Zone, um, which. I have to admit. I think the line coming across the bottom and then the sun setting into the line, but not mm. below it. I think that's Twilight Zone too, right? Like, doesn't that come back for the intro? I can't remember because that looks very familiar. I cannot remember, but I will say that as much as the the the, the music that's introduced in season two is the famous one that everyone remembers for Twilight Zone, and it's the one that's used in all the reboots and you know even the one from this year, like. Mm-hmm. When I got to it originally, when I first watched seasons one and two, I I, I, I annoyed me that they changed it because I got, I got so used to the season one music that I was like, no, no, go back. <laughs> well, we're not binging this, so maybe it'll be okay. Maybe it'll be okay. But it annoyed me at the time. Uh, so we'll see how I, I feel. Obviously, it's good music. I'm not saying it's not, but like, I'm just, I like to, <laughs> the intro was different. Anyway, so uh, once again, we're in a, a set, but this time with mannequins and or mannequins mannequin not mannequins um and rod selling's but it, it, like from the sounds of it it sounds like it's going to be like toy story where the mannequins come alive when mm-hmm. everyone goes home um he announced a couple of actors for a couple of actresses specifically uh so it seems like it's going to be a lady-led episode it's called the after hours uh, which maybe lines up. Here's, here's the IMDb description. A woman is treated badly by some odd salespeople on an otherwise empty department store floor. I do like the sound of this. That sounds creepy. I'm ready. Yeah, I'm game. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm game. Uh, and I don't know what this is, so I'm excited. Mannequins typically are quite creepy things when you shoot them in the right way, so mm-hmm. could, could, this, could, this could actually be a very good horror episode if they if they if if it lands. Um, and the IMDb rating is promising, so I... Okay, cool. So we'll look forward to that next time. Maybe we'll get like a proper horror episode. Mm. But yeah, so that has been Mr. Beavis. Um, <laughs> I never saw Beavis and Butthead growing up, I'm sorry. <laughs> I know that's <laughs> Um I, uh, nah. It just makes me it's think. It's not a very good impression. Honestly, for me, it just makes me think of a beaver. So his name's just kind of silly in that respect. It's awfully close to the Burgess Meredith character in um, The End of the World 1. Time enough, enough at last, last. yeah. So. His name was Mr. Bemis. And oh, he was right, kind okay. of a similar type of character. Anyway. Yes, how dare he read? How dare he, how dare he read things? Chaucer and Dickens. Who does he think he is? See if you, see if you read that episode now. Now the twist would be that he, he wants to play on his iPad, but when the world ends <laughs> there's no electricity so he can't charge his iPad. That would be the twist ending. <laughs> there's no wi-fi ah! i went and saw judd apatow do stand up and he does a really hilarious impression of his daughter who's like super teenager mm. he's like what would you bring with you on a desert island he asked her like trying to get to know her better mm. and she just doesn't want to play along and she goes charger <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Charger. He does a great impression of his daughter. It's hilarious. I, I don't like his movies, but his stand-up's pretty good. I, I, ho- <laughs> I hope he raised the question of where she would plug the charger in. I, I hope that came up. <laughs> I also want to explain to I think to it was her. just a demonstration to see how like far removed his daughter is from him. <laughs> I remember watching a movie. Um, I think it was like a Disney Channel original or something like that, but it was like a family gets stranded on an island and the dad was the vice principal from Sabrina Teenage Witch and mm. they had to uh like they basically they're stranded there so they end up building like this big tree house and they actually end up with electricity because they build a big like wheel for the, the waterfall they, they essentially get hydropower um and I'm like is that going into this plan is like there's a charge she got an outlet she's going to get a big wheel she's going to get hydropower <laughs> going uh like, there's a lot, a lot of stuff in here it's going to bug me what it's called now hold on I'm going to find this I'm going to find this movie. Is it like Swiss Family Robinson? <laughs> oh, that sounds that sounds close. That sounds right. That may be it. Well, All that's right. a Disney movie. And they may have made like a TV show version. 
I thought it was a TV movie, but maybe I just maybe it was just on the Disney Channel. And when would this have been? Like the early two thousands, late nineties. I mean, this was Family Robinson. It's a much older film. <laughs> oh yeah, maybe it was like a newer TV version of it. Yeah. Um, come on, give it to me. Give it to me. Beverly Hills Family Robinson. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. so definitely taking the same yeah, that, idea this is why I watched it at the time do you know who the teenage daughter is? oh who? hormones? <laughs> you, <laughs> you may know her from the hit television show Buffy the Vampire Slayer Sarah Michelle yeah. Gellar was the teen daughter in this movie <laughs> that'll be why I watched it because I was a Buffy fan ah <laughs> dear yes um I, 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 it's hard to believe I, uh, I somehow got onto Beverly Hills Family Robinson at the end of this Twilight Zone review, but we did. Uh, so that is, uh, that is this week's Twilight Zone. So thank you very much for, for joining us. Uh, let us know what you thought of the episode in the comments below. You can like and subscribe, all that stuff. You can support us by rating the podcast on your podcast app. Apple Podcasts being the most common one. Give us five stars. Helps more people find us. Helps the podcast grow and spread like a disease, but a good disease that you want to spread. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, love. I don't know. <laughs> Tara, uh, what can people do to support us financially? <laughs> you can check out our Patreon page. It's patreon.com slash TV and donate as little as a dollar per month. And you can get these Twilight Zone episodes um, early at $5 per month. <laughs> Correct. But you get more bonus stuff for the $1 tier even. You get uh, bonus episodes of The Ace, our science fiction movie podcast, and the um, Screams After Midnight, the horror movie podcast that Peter does with Tim. Also very good. So check it out. Also very good. But not quite as good as The Ace. That was the tone there. There was a tone that said, <laughs> yeah, it's also very good, but not... It's, it's, well, the, I B, mean, it's the B show. It's new. You guys, you, you know, give it some time. You guys will figure <laughs> it out. Figure out what works. I think we'll be crossing 400 episodes like in February <laughs> or something like that. Um, so, yes, uh, thank you once again for watching and listening. We always appreciate it. Keep watching Twilight Zone, guys. No, that's not what I say. Keep watching TV, guys, in the Twilight Zone. <laughs>